Hey everyone, my name is Taylor Sparks and today I'm talking about a new paper that was published in IMMI. It's entitled Annotating Material Science Text, a Semi-Automated Approach for Crafting Outputs with Gemini Pro. This paper came from my research group here at the University of Utah. I want to describe what it was, what were we trying to do, what did we accomplish, what inspired it, right? So now like the title suggests, this article is about trying to get data out of the literature and into materials databases. We have a materials data problem, not because we're not generating data, but because we're not assembling it into databases. And a lot for quite a while, people have been talking about using natural language processing or machine learning models to grab that data from those articles and turn it into databases. And we were not the first ones to do this by any means. In fact, we were inspired by this paper right here which has now come out in Nature Communications. We saw the preprint in December of 2022 by the good folks at UC Berkeley, LBNL, and others, where essentially they're doing the same thing that we set up to try and do, which is grab data from literature, right? If you take a look at their paper, there's this great figure that we saw right here. And when you look in it, you see what they accomplished. They were able to take this unstructured text, like this block of description of maybe a material or how it was made or what the products were, right? And by doing manual annotation, boo, right? That's no fun. They were able to take that block of text and turn it into some sort of structured format. For example, you could put it into a JSON format or whatever else, right? And with about 100 examples of doing that by hand, and doing 100 examples is a huge investment. If you've done this, that is not a trivial thing to do. But then you could train a model. For example, they were using large language models here. They had a partially trained model with 100 examples and using their partially trained model, they could then generate an additional, say, about 500 examples total where they would have to sort of babysit it. And if it got something wrong, they would correct it. But it was doing most of the work. And then once you have 500 examples, they were able to do a further training, right, fine-tuning to get a, a fine-tuned large language model, which could do it uh, pretty effectively. So that was awesome. That's what inspired us. So what did we do differently? Well, what we did differently is that we relied on Gemini Pro. So that's not the only difference. Gemini Pro is just another language model. But something slick about Gemini Pro is that at the time, it allowed us to really easily do something called structured prompts. Now, if you're not familiar with what a structured prompt is, I can show you a diagram. It's basically like this. It's very similar to what the other model is doing. But the difference is that you not only ask it to do a task like, hey, I want you to summarize this document into a, make it more concise. Or, hey, I want you to take this method section and turn it into a JSON with the materials metadata, right? This time you do that, but you also give it some examples, right? So that's where the structured prompt comes from, right? You essentially say like, okay, had this been the input over here as input one, then this is the output that I would expect you to turn out. And you can give it several examples, but you don't have to do 100, right? If we compare that to sort of the Daglin paper, they did quite a few of these examples, like 100 before they even got a, fine, a partially fine-tuned model. We were able to do this with less than 10 examples. So, so very efficient at reducing the amount of data needed to generate these, um, these outputs, right? So how did it work? How do, do we see that this actually works? It works pretty well, right? So here's what we did. First off, we leveraged NuGet. That's a tool that, that came out of Meta, actually, that helps us parse our PDFs. It allows you to basically take the PDF and turn it into markup language. It's going to make it easier for us to work with. Um, we took 10 different articles that span sort of the wide variety of different mains that are present in material science, uh, looked at supercapacitors, high entropy alloys, batteries, ceramic papers, you know, we tried to keep it broad, right? From those, the individual papers had to be segmented into individual sections because um, Gemini Pro does have a token size limit like most large language models, you can't just give it the entire thing. So we had to break it into small chunks. In this case, we had about 86 individual sections spread across those 10 papers. Um, and then we started asking for it to do the tasks, right? For example, if this was the experimental details method, you can see what the input was. We asked it to do summarization tasks, right? Where we told it, hey, you're a skilled summarizer and your task is to succinctly summarize material science data, translating any markup language into clear text, focus on clear aspects, uh, include chemical formula, processing parameters, characters, right? We basically tell it exactly what to do. And then we give it an example. For example, had you been given this, we expect it to be that. Or we did JSON extraction, right? Where we basically said, given this block of text, here's what we expect you to turn it into so that it could be loaded into some sort of materials database, for example, right? Um, 
the results are that this worked pretty well. The type of metrics that we used are Rouge score and BERT score, right? And to do this, we generated, we had the model generate the output five different times so that we can see sort of there's a stochastic nature to this process. What's the sort of variation that we can expect to see? We took the average by looking at five different outputs. Um, and if you look at the scores, it's pretty good. If you look at our Rouge 1, 2, and Rouge L scores, it's about 0 0.58, 0 0.36, 0 0.56. That's not particularly amazing. But the way that, remember, the, the way that Rouge score works is if it doesn't get the exact same word, then it doesn't hit it right. It, you just, you, it doesn't count it. But BERT score is a better metric because it takes into account close synonyms. Maybe it didn't use the exact same word for cold, but it used the word cool or something, right? Um, there it's going to count it, right? Because it's using it in context. It also cares about word order, right? The order in which data gets extracted from literature might be really important. You can't just like scramble the words. So BERT score is a better metric. And what's cool is that in the BERT score, we're getting 092 Right, right, uh, of a metric there. So, which is pretty fantastic. Um, so, uh, last up is the time savings. You know, we found that while manual annotation from scratch takes something like an hour per paper, with this process where we only have to do a small number of structured prompts, you don't have to do 100, you can do, I think we did less than 10 in this paper. It was only taking us about 15 minutes per paper uh, for whether it was JSON extraction or abstractive summarization. So check out the paper uh, to see all the details in this paper. Uh, you can learn more about it. You can find it at Integrating Materials in Manufacturing Innovation, a journal that I am proud to be associated with. Uh, and the link will be here in the description. Okay, see you guys next time for another two minute paper in material science.